Do you struggle with being a Catholic? Mortal sin? Temptations? Is your home lacking peace? Do you want to go to the next level of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, but you don't know how? You don't know what to do. You don't know what the next step is. Good news. Devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. This is a part two video. I did a history of the Sacred Heart and how it relates to a renewal of devotion after the Crusades, really blossoming in the 1200s. And today we're going to look at this idea of Christ giving his heart to us. I mentioned previously, you know, so often evangelicals and Protestants say, have you given your heart to Jesus? And that's important. But as Catholics, we believe, as you see here, that Christ gives his heart to us. We give our heart to Jesus. He gives his heart to us. There's a union. There's an indwelling of Christ in us through baptism and then even more so through the Eucharist. We believe that the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. When we receive the Eucharist, he is entering into us. There is this deep and profound communion. That's why it's called Holy Communion. Cum and union. Communion. Union with one another. And the Sacred Heart devotion is what helps Catholics understand this mystery. That he gives us his heart and we give him our heart. And we are connected to him by what means? Love. The heart signifies love. So today, we're going to go through the 12 promises of the Sacred Heart. And it will change the way you pray. It'll change the way you live. It'll change your home, your household. And ultimately, it will change the way you die and hopefully be with Christ forever. So let's run through those 12 promises of Jesus Christ. Now, these were given by Christ in a private revelation, in a private vision to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 1600s, and we're going to go through them. Okay, number one, I will give them, these are for people who have devotion to the heart of Jesus. Number one, I will give them all the graces necessary in their state of life. What's a state of life? State of life is the calling that God has given you in your life, not just your job, but all the surrounding obligations and difficulties, sacrifices. Maybe you're handicapped. Maybe you've gone through a horrible divorce. Maybe you're bankrupt. Maybe you're married with 10 kids. Uh, maybe you're a lawyer. You're a plumber, you're a doctor, whatever you are, whatever, wherever you are in your life, you need graces to excel and to function and ultimately orient you to heaven. And so if you have devotion to the sacred heart of Christ, which is the core of Christ, in Latin, the word core is heart and heart is core, C-O-R in Latin. Number two, I will establish peace in their homes. My wife, Joy, and I, we have eight children. And there are disagreements and there are problems. And one of the things that we strive for in our home is the peace of Jesus Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers. We want peace in our home. We want peace in our marriage. And we want peace in our relationship with our children. And also peace for whoever comes into our home, family and friends. So devotion to the sacred Christ, uh, sacred heart of Christ spreads peace. And I think we all want that. So let's do it. Also, there is a great devotion called enthronement of the sacred heart. It comes with also enthronement of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But it is putting an image of Christ in his sacred heart exposed in a prominent place in your home. In our home, we have it in two places. We have it in the main living room over the fireplace is a picture of Christ in the sacred heart. And then in our other living space, we also have an image of Christ in the Sacred Heart. Paired with that is an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her Immaculate Heart. They're in both, both of them in both places. Why? We want peace in our house and we want people who come into our house to say, these people are Catholic. These people believe in Jesus. Number three, I will comfort them in all their afflictions. If you're in this life, you are going to suffer. We will get diseases. We might get into car wrecks, 
accidents, people are going to break your heart. Family members, friends, strangers. All of us will go through afflictions. We need comfort in the afflictions. Devotion to the Sacred Heart is where we find profound comfort. Number four, I will be their secure refuge during life and above all in death. One of the great images in Catholic mysticism is when Christ dies on the cross, the centurion pierces his side, blood and water comes out. And the mystics say that you take your problems and you place them in that side wound of Jesus. In other words, you push them into the opening in his chest and push them to his heart. Why? Because he cares. And that's called a refuge. It's a place where you can hide. It's beautiful. Number five, I will bestow abundant blessings upon all their undertakings. Are you getting married? That's an undertaking. Are you becoming a nun? That's an undertaking. Are you becoming a priest? Going to seminary? That's an undertaking. A new job? That's an undertaking. All these, everything that you begin, you want to begin and end it for the Lord. Devotion to the Sacred Heart. He will bless it. Number six, sinners will find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. We experience justice, but we all know that we want mercy. And if you ever stood on the beach and looked out on the ocean, the ocean is big. And here Christ says, the infinite ocean ocean of mercy. Where is that infinite ocean of mercy? In his infinite heart. Number seven, lukewarm souls will become fervent. We know in the last book of the Bible, the apocalypse, the book of Revelation, Christ himself says, if you are neither hot or cold, but lukewarm, but tepid, it says in the Greek, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus Christ said that. Scary words. I will vomit you out of your mouth if you're lukewarm. So we don't want to be lukewarm. We want to be fervent. And focusing on the love of God, the heart of Jesus, will give us heat, intensity, love, warmth towards God and towards our neighbor. Number eight, fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. In other words, you become a saint. High perfection is putting away sins in your life, not just big mortal sins, but the small, tiny imperfections, the smaller venial sins, putting away everything that causes you to not get closer to God. And then also what expands your heart to love God more and more. Number nine, I will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored. This goes back up to number two, establishing peace in the home. Again, you should enthrone an image of the sacred heart in your home, where you live, in a prominent place, not in a corner. Don't be ashamed. Honor Christ, honor his heart. Put up an image in your home. You can get these at a Catholic bookstore. You can get them on, on an online Catholic bookstore. You can even get, make sure they're reverent and they're well done. But I mean, you can even get these. I've seen them on um, Amazon.com. I wouldn't encourage you to go there to get that, but you can get them. It's not that difficult. Number 10, I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. You know, priests are often called to go to hospitals, to go to nursing homes, to minister to people who are dying, who maybe haven't been to church in 10, 20, 30 years. And their grandchild or their son calls the priest and says, will you please go? They're dying. They're not well. Please go make one last attempt to convert them to Jesus Christ. That's a hard task. The priest who's in love with the heart of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, he will be given, it says here, the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. Number 11, those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart. Tell other people about the heart of Jesus. Many people 
Think of Jesus as a mean judge who just wants to send everyone to hell. No, he hung on the cross. With his sacred heart, he pumped out every drop of blood as a payment to redeem every single human person. If you promote the heart of Jesus, you're promoting the love of God. And it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance, St. Paul says in Romans. It's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance, his clemency. So when you promote the heart of Jesus, you promote the love of Jesus. And number 12, which is the longest one, I promise you in the excessive mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who receive Holy Communion on the first Fridays in nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last moment, moment end quote. So this is um, the first Friday's devotion. The idea is every first Friday of the month, you go to mass and you receive communion. Of course, you want to go to communion. I mean, you want to go to confession before you receive communion. If there's any mortal sin or any problems there. But this is a good devotion because it sets you in what? A habit. It takes... People debate on this, whether it takes 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to develop a habit, whether it's uh, flossing or saying something nice to your boss when you walk in. It takes 30 to 90 days for your brain to kind of fill those grooves to create a habit. This is a habit of grace. This is going for nine months, making the priority, not just to go to church on Sunday, to go on the first Fridays. And when you go on the first Fridays, you're making reparation for sins. You're going there and you're saying, I'm a sinner. I've wounded your heart. I led to you dying on the cross. And I'm also sorry for everyone else in the world. We humans have screwed up and we have offended you, God, and we have hurt your heart. And I'm just here on the first Friday to say, I don't want to hurt your heart. I want to show love to your heart. Here I am. The first Friday. There are so many stories. I know a, a family... Um, their grandfather made the first Fridays and he didn't live a Catholic life his whole life. But in the end, he had a conversion. A priest came. He made a good confession. He received the last rites. He re received extreme unction. And he received the promise of the first nine Fridays. There's so many stories of this. I've heard, I don't know if it's confirmed, that JFK, in his youth, did this devotion. His mother made sure he did the first nine Fridays, and although he didn't live an entirely wholesome Catholic life, however, at the very end, when he was shot in Dallas, there was a priest right there who was making a sick call at the hospital who was able, in his final moments while he was still apparently alive a little bit, to give him the last rites. So he died receiving those final sacraments. So that's the 12 promises. You can go online and you can look them up if you want to review them. But uh, again, I think kind of the starting point is let's get an image of the sacred heart in our house. Every evening uh, after the rosary, our family says three times, most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you would do me the favor, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, and please share it on Facebook or Twitter. And if you're new, please subscribe and make sure you hit the bell. You can do that in the bottom right corner. And when you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I make a new video or go live. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us.